Welcome to Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret. We're in 2 Chronicles chapter 11 today. 2 Chronicles chapter 11 verse 1. Get your Bible. Open it up to 2 Chronicles. We'll begin in a minute after I tell you, as I do on every broadcast, about the Scripture Verse by Verse website, which is found at the Bible versebyverse.com. If you love the Word of God and you don't want entertainment, you don't want a variety show, you don't want cool, you don't want, you don't want somebody who's trying to draw attention to himself, you just want the pure Word of God because you love Jesus, then I suggest that you check out the Scripture Verse by Verse website found at the thebibleversebyverse.com because all you will find there is God's Word taught verse by verse, Genesis through Revelation, without watering it down, just letting it speak for itself. 36 years of archives are there for you. Four complete series going through all 31,000 plus verses in our King James Bible are archived at the Bible, verse by verse dot com. Choose, click, and listen. Bring your Bible. That's all you need. And Father, we pray that you would sanctify us by your truth your word is truth in Jesus' name. Amen. Second Chronicles chapter 11. And when Rehoboam was come to Jerusalem, he gathered of the house of Judah and Benjamin an hundred and fourscore thousand chosen men, which were warriors, to fight against Israel, that he might bring the kingdom again to Rehoboam. Rehoboam had said that he would rule with an iron fist, which is why the ten northern tribes jumped ship and followed Jeroboam as their king. Well, Rehoboam said he would rule with an iron fist, and he will try doing that right now by forcing, trying to force the north to submit to but the word of the Lord came to Shemaiah, the man of God, saying, Speak unto Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, king of Judah, and to all Israel and in Judah and Benjamin, saying, This message is to King Rehoboam, a message to him from God, not just to him, but to the assembled army that's about to attack the, the to attack, I should say, the northern tribes. And the message, as I said, is from God. What is it? Verse 4. Thus saith the Lord, Ye shall not go up, nor fight against your brethren. Return every man to his house, for this thing is done of me. And they obeyed the words of the Lord, and returned from going against Jeroboam. Smart. Smart move. The rebellion in the north meaning the split between the north and the south, was done by God's permission. Therefore, to try to reconnect the north and the south by force at this time would be contrary to God's will. And so we learn from this that sometimes what we assume to be right is not God's will. Verse 5. And Rehoboam dwelt in Jerusalem and built cities, for defense in Judah. He built even Bethlehem and Etam and Tekoa and Beth Zur and Shoko and Adullam and Gath and Marasha and Ziph and Adoram and Lachish and Azekah and Zorah and Ahijalon and Hebron, which are in Judah and in Benjamin fenced cities. And he fortified the strongholds and put captains in them, and store of victual, and of oil and wine. And in every several city he put shields and spears, and made them exceeding strong, having Judah and Benjamin on his side. The southern kingdom had taken a big hit, because they lost ten of the twelve tribes of Israel. So suddenly Judah is only a fraction of what they had been. And that's the reason why they immediately built towns for their defense. 
13. And the priests and the Levites that were in all Israel resorted to him out of all their coast, which makes sense. The south had the true religion of God. They had Jerusalem. They had the temple. They had the true worship of God going on right there. And that's going to be a big advantage to them in the future in many different ways. But we see one of the ways right here. Notice verse 14. For the Levites left their suburbs and their possessions and came to Judah and Jerusalem. For Jeroboam and his sons had cast them off from executing the priest's office unto the Lord. Jeroboam in the north would not allow up there he would not they would not allow people up Jeroboam I'm sorry in the north would not allow the people up there to go to the southern kingdom to Jerusalem to worship God properly something that God had commanded that people do Jeroboam forbid it you can't go down there consequently the priests who were scattered throughout the north in different Levitical cities the priests who lived in the northern ten tribes took off on the king and on the idolatry that he had set up in the northern kingdom. And they moved south to Judah where they could minister to God Almighty in the temple. 15. And he ordained him priest for the high places and for the devils and for the calves which he had made. He refers to Jeroboam. And things quickly began to go downhill up north. Jeroboam, because he didn't want the people to go south to Jerusalem, and he certainly didn't want the priests to go south to Jerusalem, which they already did, he's trying to stop the bleeding. So he invents his own false religion to replace the religion of the one true God. 16. And after them... Out of all the tribes of Israel, such as set their hearts to seek the Lord God of Israel, came to Jerusalem to sacrifice unto the Lord God of their father. So those in the north who cared about God left their homes and they left everything else to live in the south away from Jeroboam's idolatry. So if this was an attempt to keep people up there, well, he might have kept people up there, but they weren't good people. The true worshipers of God wouldn't take part in, in idolatry up there, so they went south. He ended up losing. He ended up um, ostracizing the good godly people, and they took off for the south. Big mistake. He should have just let them travel to the south to do their worship, but he was afraid that you know, they would probably stay there. But they certainly will stay there now because they're not going to go back to where there's idolatry. 17. So they strengthened the kingdom of Judah. Of course they did. Good people filled Judah, southern kingdom, strengthened it. So they strengthened the kingdom of Judah and made Rehoboam the son of Solomon strong. Three years, for three years they walked in the way of David and Solomon. So for three years the south was doing well because they were dedicated to God. Well, Verses 18 to 23 tell us a different story of what happened after those three years. Uh, it lists Rehoboam's family and included our multiple wives, which is always a mistake. Let's go down into chapter 12. And it came to pass when Rehoboam had established the kingdom and had strengthened himself, he forsook the law of the Lord and all Israel with him. Good times, as is often the case, led to the spiritual decline of the South. Sometimes it's hard for people to handle success and prosperity. Two, and it came to pass that in the fifth year of King Rehoboam, Shishak, king of Egypt, came up against Jeroboam, or I should say Jerusalem, because they had transgressed against the Lord. God did not waste any time. The southern kingdom turned against God, and he didn't send any time or spend any, waste any time, I should say, sending punishment to the south 
because of their sin. He sent Egypt against them. Verse 3, with 1,200 chariots and threescore thousand horsemen, and the people were without number that came with him out of Egypt, the Lubims, the Sukkims, and the Ethiopians. God was punishing the south. He was against the south, so their fortified cities didn't stop the enemy. And now the enemy is at the doorstep of the capital city of Jerusalem. All the precautions in the world mean nothing if you don't have the blessings of God. You can have the strongest military, the most prosperous nation, but if you don't have the blessings of God because you're walking with Him, you got nothing. You are wide open for attack and destruction. Verse 5, Then came Shemaiah, the prophet to Rehoboam, and to the princes of Judah that were gathered together to Jerusalem because of Shishak, and said unto them, Thus saith the Lord, Ye have forsaken me, and therefore have I also left you in the hand of Shishak. Don't mess with God, ladies and gentlemen. Don't mess with God. Rehoboam may not have known that the reason that they were on the verge of being conquered is because they had abandoned the way of God, but he knows now. See what he does with it. Six, whereupon the princes of Israel and the king humbled themselves, and they said, the Lord is righteous. Well, they humbled themselves by admitting that God was right to punish them right now. 27 or 7 and when the Lord saw that they humbled themselves the word of the Lord came to Shemaiah saying they have humbled themselves therefore I will not destroy them but I will grant them some deliverance and my wrath shall not be poured out upon Jerusalem by the hand of Shishak since God knew that their repentance was real he then relented on the punishment you know, the Bible says if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But the Bible also says if somebody tries to conceal their sins, they will not prosper. And that's putting it mildly, actually. Verse 8. Nevertheless, they shall be his servants that they may know my servants, service and the service of the kingdoms of the countries. God says that he's going to let Judah not be conquered totally, but he's going to let Judah be ruled by an unsaved king. And that was to teach his people a lesson, just to show them how good they had it when God was their leader. And when they rebel against God, their leader, and they have a man for a leader, they'll see the difference. So this was to show them, in contrast to the king of Egypt, how much better God is as a ruler, and a nicer one too for that matter. You might not like the restraints he puts on sin, but you're a whole lot better off submitting to the lordship of God because you're going to have to serve someone. And if you don't serve God... You're going to serve sin, and you're going to serve the world, and you're going to serve the government, you're going to serve something, and it's not going to be nearly as pleasant. Okay, we'll stop right there for today. Study all of God's Word with me at thebibleversebyverse.com. Choose, click, and listen from four complete series going through the whole Bible verse by verse. If you'd like to be a part of Scripture verse by verse, you can be by praying for me and God's Word. And when you take a break from studying with me at the Bible, versebyverse.com, go to the front page, click the donate button, and prayerfully give as the Lord may lead. Until next time, Michael Moret for Scripture Verse by Verse. Thank you for studying with me. Until next time, so long everyone.